marriage is marriage is best described as a relationship between Christ and the church. Paul writes about it in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22, 28. Let's look at it. Most of us already know it. It says, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife as also Christ is the head of the church and he's the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So the first condition for building a successful marriage as a lady and you're ready to become a wife is that you must be willing to submit to your own husband. That's one. It says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify, sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies husbands are required to love their own wives as their own body so the next the question to ask every man here every man seated here is that how would you love to be treated as a man how would you love to be treated husbands must love their wives as their own body would you love to be beaten would you love pistol to be on your body would you love your body to be hated would you love to be mocked? Would you love to be despised? Would you love to be publicly disrespected? How would you love? What treatment would you accept for yourself as a man? When you think on these things, it will guide you on how you should treat your own wife. Husbands ought to love their own wife. So it doesn't matter whether you out of out of pity, whether you ended up marrying that lady. But the command is you must love. There is no condition to loving. Husbands, love your wife. It is a command, it's not a condition. Wives, submit to your own husband. These are principles that are required. Listen, I have seen a lady who told me she can never submit to her husband. For what? Uh, when she works more, she earns more. It doesn't matter whether you are receiving higher salary. It doesn't matter whether you are the one that is receiving, whether you are the one contributing more. The, con the commandment is that you must submit. So that is why I tell every single lady, open your eyes. Love is not blind. Love sees. You are the one who is blind to the love that has eyes. Love has been seen from the beginning. Open your eyes now and see if that man that you are in a relationship with or you are considering is the kind of man that you can submit to. Is the kind of man that you would want to honor. It's the kind of man that you can pop. There are, there are ladies, there are, I, I am a counselor. I've been counseling for years. There are women who are ashamed of their husband. They cannot, they can't tell anyone that that's my husband publicly. But you see, when I was in a relationship, I could boast about the man I was going out, even though he was broke. I could say, wow, that's my guy. That's my fiance. If I ask some of you now, you're not to say you're in a relationship. Because even you, you're not sure. I could tell why the man was vast. He was submitting to the leadership of Christ. He wasn't deceiving me in any form. You could see the fruit of godliness. And me, he was demonstrating it. Christianity is not talk. Christianity is acts. Christianity is an attitude. I saw his baby. I knew that this woman can mentor me. There are men that you are hanging out with. They can't mentor you. You are talking one. They don't, they don't even know what they are. You, don't want, you can't comprehend what they are really saying. They are not supporting your vision. A man who does not support your vision, you will find it hard submitting to that man. I am here today because my husband supports the instructions of God in my life. You must submit to a visionaire. The man may have good money in his accounts. I don't care, but what is his vision accounts? The lady may have feelings for you, but what account of help does she have in supporting what you do? She can be a believer, but not suitable for you. We won't talk about this suitability. It will look like it has to be, and maybe you're talking about, and the Lord God said it's not good that the man should be alone. Be alone. I'll make him a helper suitable. Listen, the lady can be a believer, but she's not suitable. Have you not seen ladies who say they can never marry a pastor? 
They can't marry. They can't marry. Ah, you tell them, what kind of um, work do you want to do? What kind of person do you want to be? Say, ah, uh, I want to marry someone who works in the bank. If it's not bank, I'm not doing. She's good. That's the truth. But she has defined what she wants in life. She's not a bad person. I never wanted to marry a pastor. I took the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's the truth. So you need to look for not just a believer, a suitable believer. A believer that suits you, that fits your direction. So that dragginess in respect, dragginess in honor will not be there. Because it is husbands. Love your wife as your own body. Husbands, if you know you are insecure in supporting her vision, please, I beg you, do not marry her. If you know you are treating the Lord already by her salary, by her status, her present status, please, by all means, do not marry her. Except you allow the Holy Spirit to work on you. Because what you are already saying is that as a bridegroom that you are, you cannot stand your wife exceeding your level in life. And that's a poverty mindset. One day in my house, I was just dropping on, my, on the conversation. My husband was having on phone with a, 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 someone he looks up to. Let me just put it like that. And I was hearing from my study, the man was saying, my husband didn't even know today that I was listening to that conversation. The man was telling me, your wife is out there. Oh. People are sending her mails, not inviting her. She's all over the place. I'm saying, you need to work on yourself more. You have to develop yourself. Because your wife is not out there. She's doing my husband said her name is Anulio J.K. Ray. She's bearing my name. Help me celebrate my husband, Joe. Because the truth is, if the man did not push me, I'm naturally a demotivated person. You know how you can know that you have a purpose in life, but you're not pushy enough? You know, because having a purpose is not enough. You can have a purpose and not be self-motivated. I used to be that kind of person. My husband would push me. I, mean, I don't want you to just be bearing my name in my house, Mrs. Soundly or J. Kerry. I want to be that woman out there. That is why I tell ladies, if you marry a man that does not have a vision account, you'll be just there in life. Because the role of every helper is to suggest. You can't decide. So if the man does not support what you do, you will still submit to him. That's why you need to open your eyes. That is why before you even choose that life partner, you need to have an idea of where your life is going. Don't be directionless. Don't act like you are a needy person, whereas you are needed in life. Position yourself. Find who God, find, find who God has made you to be through this lens, through the word of God. Don't be, don't be about chasing, looking for a man who is catching feelings and not catching feelings. Look for what God has to say about your life and begin to walk in that way. So that when you see that man that has sense, that ready to support you, you will know. The same thing with the brother. Be about staying on your, your direction, staying on your purpose, so that you can know who is ready to help you. My husband came to meet me first of all. He told me that he has a passion to become a police officer. I rebuked the devil in him. I kabash. Because my late grandfather was a police officer, so I knew how they were posting my grandfather and my grandmother up and down in barracks. I said, God, you didn't send me to barracks. And then we just started a relationship. My husband said, he has a passion to be a police officer. I said, Father God, this cannot work. That means you don't want his relationship to work, God. But I thought I heard you. Passionate about ministry, he knew the call of God upon his life, but wanted to do police by the side. I'm like, God, I, can't, I, I didn't picture my life in barracks. I started praying. He came back from the first stage. He said, ah, sweet, my height. I passed the height. I, I, then we're just in a relationship. I'll say, I'll just tell him, i say, oh, thank you, Lord. As you go out again for the next stage, I'll speak with him on phone. We're not in the same city. I say, God goes with you, but in my mind, when I'm done with that phone call, I will kneel down. I say, Lord, this must not work. Father, help me. And so that was how I went. We went. See, one day, he called me. And I said, oh, your voice is sounding low. He said, I ah, didn't get the job. I said, oh, no, my whole, oh, my guy, so sorry, sweet. Oh, so sorry about it. I was, I was, but him, ah, he was not seeing me. I was happy. I was so excited. I said, this God, yes, prayer, Sha. And that was how he ended up not becoming a police officer. He stayed on his ministry call. And I knew at that point, I was convinced to help him with the required strength needed to help a pastor. Listen, don't force, you. see, and you know the funny thing about this, why I said this story, my husband was not trying to convince me about his direction. 
The problem, when you are changing and changing and trying to, trying to force the relationship to happen, is that you are trying to convince the lady to help you at all costs. She must support what you are doing. He wasn't trying to, when he, when he, when we left the church, when he, I met him in a particular church. So the doctrines were quite different. And then he, he, he was ordained as a pastor. He wasn't trying to negotiate with me. Because it was a relationship, so please, by all means, if you're not willing to support what I do, this is the way. The same thing with me. He got ordained as a pastor. And the doctrines were very different. Where, where I was, you could wear trousers to church and everything. And then I was going to go to a church where you're not going to wear trousers and everything. He just told me straight that that's the parts. He accepted it. The only thing that I wasn't rigid was he's a flexible person when it comes to doctrines. But that's the doctrine of the place. And I have to obey. I have to heed to the instruction, the doctrines of that church. But the funny thing was, he didn't try to convince me about where he was going to. He knew I didn't want to marry a pastor. I just had to be convinced by myself. Because your destiny should not be negotiated. Your purpose in life is not market. It's not pepe. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, it's not tomatoes. You are, we are, you're, you're, you're not tomatoes. You're not pepper. You're not onions. Your purpose is not onions. It's not, it's, it's, there's a price already on it. It's so priceless that you cannot afford to exchange it with just anybody. You are not marrying because you just want to marry. You are marrying because you need a companion over your life, in your life, to fulfill your destiny. So if you do not have an idea of where you are going to, I beg you, do not get into a relationship. You don't even need it. You need to have an idea because many times, the reason why we, we don't understand the leadership in marriage, people do not understand the order in marriage because many people have gotten into wrong relationships and they are weary of submitting. They are weary of loving their spouse. The truth is, every responsible man wants a woman that can support him 100%. The same thing with the woman. So, but if you do not know, you cannot recognize, let me tell you, before I got married, everybody will tell me, man, you are ministry material. I didn't look it. I wasn't preaching. If I got married, I only preached in one, um, just a little talk, maybe 10 minutes. I taught in a, a youth fellowship I belonged to outside my church. I was just serving God my own way and all that. The truth is, I wasn't preaching. So if preaching was the criteria for being a pastor's wife, I honestly didn't have it. I said preaching in marriage. That's the truth. I wasn't like this before marriage. But you see, I got convinced to support him. So I was willing to submit to his instructions. And he got convinced to support. As a matter of fact, even before I got married to him, he had an idea of where I was going to. Walk in your direction. Walk in that purpose and start servicing it. So that you are able to know who aligns with you. You are able to know who is going on that journey with you. You cannot carry just anybody into your life. You are not married for marriage. You are married for a purpose. And I want to beg you, just in case you collect gifts from anybody. They buy you gifts, you collect it, you are excited about it. You buy your wristwatch, you don't know the watch, you don't know your time, you don't even know whether it's God's time, but you know the beautiful watch, the designer's watch they bought for you. They buy you good watch, he buys you shawarma. Even a guy, so they buy you gifts. Ladies buy you gifts. And it's not bad. You receive all of these gifts and you are excited. It has gotten to a point where it has choked you. You have received this gift, received this gift, that you know that the truth is, you honestly don't want to say yes to this brother, but because of the gifts. The gifts have shifted your focus. I beg you in the name of God, don't marry out of pity, marry out of purpose. Even if the brother was the one that paid your school fees. That is why you must define your motive from the beginning, so you are not misguided. Do not marry out of pity. Marry out of purpose. Don't marry because you got nice gifts. You might get a nice gift from the person, but you may not have leadership sense. Don't receive designers that have designed you in a wrong way. You must know where you are going to. I didn't know that I would become a pastor tomorrow, but I was serving God. I was wasting on God. I was giving my whole life. I was submitting to God so I can understand what submission is about. I was submitting to him so that he can show me the direction of my life. 
That is what you should do right now with your waiting season. Don't be posted to just and in just you are looking for that brother. You are looking for that sister. It's nice to look, but make sure you are looking for purpose. Make sure you are looking for yourself through the lens of God. Look for you in the place of serving in the kingdom, in the place of serving your fellowship, in the place of serving your church, you will find you. I'm saying all this to say that there are principles in marriage. And the truth is, if you have not found you submitting to that man, you will not know who you should submit to. You will not know who should help you. You must be intentional in finding yourself. Tell your neighbor, find you. Find you. Don't find emotions alone. Find you. Your destiny must not be casualized. Your purpose in life must not be casualized. If not, you end up becoming a casualty in marriage. When you casualize yourself, your life, you end up becoming a casualty in marriage. Don't casualize things. I will say it and say it again. You meet someone who prays, prays very well, studies the word, a word that, but the person does not support what you do. Please, by all means, flee. I have a friend. Today, she's regretting her marriage. She got married before she got married. Because when people come to meet me for counseling, I don't address the fruit. I start from the roots. There's always a root cause many of the times. She's supposed to be a gospel singer, if not a global one by now. Because the few times I've heard her minister, my God, the atmosphere is something else. But unfortunately, she got married to a man that does not support her music ministry. So she's stuck. Marriage is boring without purpose. And I asked her, how did you get here? She said, when they, were in a, when they were in a relationship. She thought because the brother was very, you know, very dogged, committed in church and the things of God. But she remembered times when she would say she's going for a rehearsal house. The guy would say, I saw so rehearsal I beg. What are you even singing and all? I said, those were red flags. He said, she thought it was just light. I said, how can you take it very lightly? So they were just light conversation. And that's, that's how some ladies are. You scoop ice cream and scoop away your destiny. I'm telling you, the man is already telling you that, ah, what do you think? Which tailoring? I beg, I don't want to marry a tailor. What do tailors know? You now be carrying, so I'll now tell you my wife is, she's sewing, make it really, I'll be hearing that sound. And you, you are laughing. <laughs> hey, my guy, baby, boo, boo. The lady is telling you, I cannot imagine you marry my, me. Do you know? <clears throat> that was how, anyways, long story short, they got into marriage from their first year, refused her organizing her first music program. And that was how it all started. She got frustrated today. No singing. When there is no purpose, you're only living in the same roof with a person, but you are dead to life. I tell you. Question is, what, what were you guys even talking about? This is not supporting what you do. So you just be giving bets, giving bets, giving bets. And that's all. No fulfillment. And that's how many people's marriages are. They are married, but no sense of fulfillment. No sense. After cooking, after doing all, you ask yourself, what next about your life? I'm saying all these things that you must identify you for you to know who you can submit with, submit to, for you to know who can help you, who you should love. You don't just love beauty, you love purpose. You don't, you don't just submit, you're not submitted to a beer gang, you're submitted to a brain. Somebody who has sense to lead you, so you can submit to his leadership sense. 